Hello, I'm E.D. Lewis, and welcome back to my channel, E.D. Lewis Reviews, back with another uh, Nocturnal review and another Dracula review in my series. Um, before we get started, make sure you hit that like and that subscribe, and you hit that little button, that little bell that gives you notifications on my, uh, you know, my new videos, my latest ones. Um, and please leave a comment as well, because I do love reading those comments. So, okay. This one's been a while in coming. Um, I keep putting this one off. Do you, uh, I don't know if you remember, hopefully you do, and hopefully you did see it, and if you didn't, I'll put the link for it down below in the description. When I did my review on Dracula the Undead by Frida Warrington, which was published in 1997, I believe, uh, commemorating 100 years of Dracula. And how much I really liked that one. And I said that there was another Dracula book that's a sequel also called also called Dracula the Undead. Well, this is that one. So this is the other Dracula the Undead. So, um, yeah. <laughs> this is going to be uh, interesting because um, we're just going to talk about this one. Okay, so here's the book. It's Dracula the Undead. Uh, it's hyphenated, unlike the Frida Warrington one, and, um, or Warrington, I'm not sure which is correct in her, uh, pronouncing her last name. It says, the sequel to the original classic. It's by Dacre Stoker and Ian Holtz. Now you might, uh, oh, here's the cover first. I do love this cover. That is a plus. Um, now you may remember that I also did a review on Dracul which is the official prequel to Dracula. And it's a very good book. I just wasn't crazy about how the, how the ending went. Um, Dacre Stoker, of course, you know, wrote, uh, co-wrote this one with another author, Ian Holt, some years earlier. This one came out in 2009. I can't remember when Dracul came out. So this was his first outing with a, a Dracula uh, book. So this was kind of like a way of regaining control of Dracula for the Stoker family, is with this one. Now, um, I'm not going to read the synopsis, but I'm going to give you a synopsis of my own. So this one takes place in 1912. It's uh, shortly before, of course, World War One breaking out. And, um, you know, Dracula, of course, was destroyed, according to this, in like 19, sorry, 19, in 1888, during the Jack the Ripper stuff, that that was all going on, and at the end of that, that's when Dracula was destroyed. Um, so, you know, Quincy Morris had died, spoiler alert if you haven't read the original, and, you know, everybody went back to England, and Nina gave birth to Quincy and all that, Quincy Harker, um, not Quincy Morris, the one who died, um, and, you know, everybody supposed to live happily until now. So, Dr. Uh, Jack Seward, uh, he has become an addict and he is hunting vampires and working with a benefactor named Vassarab. Um, Mina, she has remained eternally young. And during the whole time I was reading this book, um, back when I read it, I kept envisioning one in a writer. I kept seeing pretty much the cast of the, uh, of the um, movie, uh, the Coppola film, in the roles of these characters. So I, I would see one in a writer, in this, um, as Mina. So she has remained eternally young, basically. And there's been rumors about, oh, you know, maybe she has a Dorian Gray portrait hidden away somewhere. And she, and she even sometimes would pretend that she and her son were siblings instead of, uh, it was a little game they'd play, instead of mother and son. And um, Jonathan Harker, he has turned to alcohol and stuff, and he resents her. He's just gone through a really dark, dark time through all this. And then we get to uh, Arthur Holmwood is pretty much... Uh, turned his back on all of it, he had, you know, as if none of it happened and stuff. And in the continuity of this book, there was the book Dracula written uh, by Bram Stoker. And um, we do get to see Bram Stoker in here, as well as um, Hamilton Dean, the one who 
wrote the uh, famous Dracula play that the 1931 film was based on and the 1979 film as well. So while this is all going on, mysterious murders start to happen. Um, it's very similar to the murders during the time of Jack the Ripper. This uh, inspector whose name I cannot remember Oh, uh, yeah, I can't remember his name off the top of my head. He is investigating this, and he starts asking all sorts of questions and stuff, and um, actually, Jack Seward is the one hunting this vampire character. Apparently, this uh, new vampire that's popping up is Elizabeth Bathory. You know, so if you've heard of Elizabeth Bathory, she's the blood countess who is supposed, supposed to have killed so many virgin girls and bathed in their blood. Supposedly. There is theories that maybe she wasn't the one, but we're not gonna get into that. So, he's hunting this vampire. Meanwhile, Quincy Harker, who's a young man, um, in his, I think, in his 20s, he is trying to pursue a career in the theater while his father, Jonathan Harker, is basically forcing him to become a lawyer like himself. And he meets this mysterious Basarab, this famous actor from Romania. And then everything starts to converge. And the past comes up, and uh, there's all kinds of interesting things that happen. That all sounds all well and good, and it's, it is fascinating. It had some great ideas, but the book does, in my, it does ultimately fall short on some of the writing. They do ripcon quite a bit of uh, Stoker's novel, and including the whole thing about vampires and sunlight, which is not in the original novel. And um, also there is a little bit of this whole, um, holy, which I do like this whole thing about holy objects and vampires, that it has to do with fear. And if a vampire, I'm trying not to give too much away on that, if a vampire does not fear, the, the relics do not work on the vampire, and I actually love that concept. Um, it does lack something on the writing and some of the storytelling because of um, some of the alterations that it makes to the story, and um, that's where it falls short. It also has some very disturbing uh, moments. There is a scene of um, rape, so there is trigger warning. Um, but all in all, it does have some interesting concepts. It's just that the book was not executed well, and it does toy with the backstory too much. Um, Rating-wise, I'm not going to rate this one. I'm going to tell you this. It, I would put the new rating. I may have my old rating up on Goodreads. I'm not sure. Um, I would now put the rating between two or three stars, personally. I wouldn't give it a one star. I didn't hate it. I did, there was many things I enjoyed about it, and when I read it, I loved it. Thinking back on it now, uh, it's my feeling. But, um, it does have some interesting moments in it, so that's why I would give it a potentially three stars. So, um, and some interesting concepts and story ideas. But, um, but... Just because I didn't like it, and it does get a, bad, a bit of a bad rap, do check it out if you are interested, because it does have the connection to Jack the Ripper. It does have Elizabeth Bathory in it. Um, you get to see pretty much all the characters, including Ben Helsing, who is a very old man now. Um, and I do like the character of Quincy Harker. I like the Frida Warrington book the best as a sequel currently. That is the sequel I would accept above all others, uh, but I also really like Dracul, except for I would choose to ignore the ending, and I can't tell why without giving up spoilers about that. But, um, anyway, this is the, the other, the, um, infamous sequel to Dracula, but, you know, if you are curious, don't hesitate to check it out. You may end up liking it, or you may just like that concept out and may not care for the writing. I don't know, but do check it out. So, anyway. I'll see you next time with another review. Uh, take care and stay spooky. Bye-bye.